What's going on guys? My name is Corey Vanderplu at Corey Photo on Twitter and Instagram. Today I'm going to be critiquing some of my subscribers' photos. If you're wondering who am I to be critiquing photos, let me just give you a quick rundown. I've been a photographer for 15 years. I worked as an editor for 10 years. I've assisted world-renowned photographers in the Canada and in the US. I was a commercial retoucher in New York City. I've also assisted world-renowned retouchers. I worked in a print shop for two years. I worked on multiple books for Tashin, The met other photographers my eyes been training for about 20 years uh, it's all i do it's my life i live and breathe this stuff and i think everyone can put their style on it say why an image can be better and that's the point of this to, to learn to grow i'm going to be learning things too through this so let's just jump right into it we're going to start off with anna hamilton so it looks like she's given me two photos here uh, one looks like the raw and this one looks like her finished cropped inversion. So let's start with this one. Uh, the first thing I notice is the eye line is a bit off. Um, I would love if you could be down a little bit. Looks like your lens is he somewhere around here, which just makes him look like he's looking up and that really just changes the perspective uh, a lot on the body angle, the head position, all that. So I would say bring the, the lens so you're more in the eye line or even just a little bit below, say somewhere in between the eyes and the nose. That'll really help uh, with proportions. Then I see that you are just shy on the crop. Um, you usually don't want to stay with your original crop just because you don't know where this is going unless this is like a New Yorker. This crop would be perfect, but I'm gonna say four by five because it's a good general crop. So let me throw a crop on here first. If you want to know how to make the crop, uh, it's in my previous videos. You can find them just by searching crop on my YouTube page. I'm gonna make this quiet. This is awfully small. Uh, let's see. Yeah, it's only 13 pixels, 100 pixels wide, so very small. That's why my crop looks so big. But uh, generally, I'd like to go somewhere in here, nice and proportioned. I mean, that helps so much already. Helps so much just in focusing the eye. And then one thing I'd say is it's just a little too uh, dark. I would like to lift everything up just a little bit, just in the mids, the lower mids in the lower portion right here. It's lifting the shadows up a little bit more. This also helps, I was gonna say to bring more detail back in the t-shirt. This helps a lot with that. Um, I like his hair. I like um, the balance of it all. You can see that there's just a little bit of imbalance in his ear here, which means that we could probably just duplicate this layer, uh, command T and just straighten this out a little bit. I mean, that helps out a lot already. There guides. And, uh, and then the next thing I'm noticing is his shirt down here. So with this same duplicated layer, I'm gonna do it again. I'm gonna hold shift, command X. And just under here, I'm going to make his shirt a little bit more symmetrical. There's also small little things you can do here when you really make the brush smaller to, to help this t-shirt get even more round. I know it seems stupid, but your eye will sink to that. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a new mask. I'm going to go to my brush tool, which is also B, and then I'm going to make sure that these colors are the opposite. I see I have a white background here, so I want black. So make sure you have black selected B and you're at 100%. And now you can just paint back this mask and get back exactly where you were. And now it doesn't affect his face at all. But I do want this new t-shirt, so I'm gonna push X again to swap my artboards. And there you go. Oh, you can see I had a little bit extra mist here. So if I hold the uh, backslash key, which is just above your return key, then you can get all of this. And now you know that it's perfect. And I think that looks much better. You can work on your own fading here, how you want it to be faded in and around. Maybe you go across the jawline, but I like his shadow actually. So I'm going to keep it where it was. There you go. There's also some small things. I mean, this is ch a child. His skin is perfect, but there are small things if you're going with an editorial magazine where you can uh, you can shift command N for a new layer. Um, 
make it soft light with the neutral color in the background so you can see it's gray and then you can push your dodge and burn tool um, just small things and now you're just darkening these small spots I mean this is so over the top and probably not necessary some would argue this is overkill but again it just helps um, take your 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 eyes to their eyes and make a deeper connection if you're looking around and you see these silly little splotches or marks then that would just might affect your eye I mean again this is overkill I don't think you need to do it so I'm even gonna take it off just a suggestion other than that I think it's great you can do one last thing here which I think is on the upper mids and just darken uh, his neck just a little bit that was obviously way too heavy so I'm gonna drop the opacity down to like 15% something really small and again it just it even more draws your eyes more to him I mean and then there's your difference it's subtle but it give it gives it more of a pop and it just helps work on balance thank you very much Anna next we have Chi Sim we have two photos here. These are great. Let's open them up. So I love that you have your 4x5 crop on. I like that you've taken the time with that. How would I fix this though? Um, I do love the body positioning of it. Your skin retouching is fantastic. I mean, this is a low, red, low res image at 300%. It looks fantastic. Um, not much I would change to be honest I mean you can always do a, another round of skin cleanup I mean this is again if you know I'm nitpicking something as stupid as bumps in the ears um, you could reduce this shine a little bit and how do you reduce that shine is just completely get rid of it and then uh, actually I see a little bit of shine everywhere so what you can do is you can completely get rid of it, even this little reflection. Even right down here. And then you can just drop your opacity to like 50% just to reduce some of those small little speckles. Again, it's just simplifying it even more. And then I do another layer here and I just see small little tiny things that you could fix. Small little tiny white dots that will distract your eye. I always like getting rid of these random flyaways up in here. It helps a lot. It helps really clean up an image. But again, we're really stretching here. Real stretch. Um, so most of this things like, I don't know, I like that. I was going to say get rid of this, but no, that's actually kind of nice. To liquefy, this could be liquefied a little bit in here. Um, just to control that shape a little more. It's just, it's not that flattering. Again, gee, I'm, I'm splitting hairs here. Your The work is great. Just to work on that shape a little bit more. Um... Yeah, I don't know. This is actually pretty good. Maybe you could darken this down to give him more of a jawline. This is uh, one of the better stumps I've had. So, oh, for the dodge tool. They've stumped me very well. Um, but the retouching's great. The light's great. Again, you can always just work on a little bit. I could take any one of my images right now I've ever done and I could nitpick the shit out of it like this. It's just, it's its own art form knowing when to give up. Um, but it's stupid. What I'm doing is silly. I'm splitting hairs. Um, in terms of how do you make this photo any better, I don't, I don't think you can. Um, you could actually fix this little dodge with the dodge tool just to get rid of these highlights. Make it more about him. And it's just smoothing, taking these small little details and smoothing it all out. I don't know. Did I do that much? I really like what I've done reducing the shine and really like what I've done in the hair here. But 
The liquify might have been too much. I don't know. I think it's a great image. It looks fantastic. I love your skin texture. Skin texture is great. Um, one thing is, that is actually a big pet peeve of mine is these tiny little stupid things. So the tiny little white marks that are made might not look like a lot on screen, but um, you see how they're so apparent here. If you ever print this image or this image goes to print, that little white spot is going to be much bigger and much more noticeable than the digital screen. All of these lines of information versus 256 lines of information or whatever a printer is. Um, so I would really work on those little hard notes, those little pops. Here, I mean, I could do the same thing. I could just uh, reduce this a little bit because that shine is just slightly distracting. But other than that, this is fantastic. Um, maybe the crop. Maybe the crop just a little bit more central to him. But then you're losing the chest and the body, which is cool. Ideally, I would love it if it was like this. You can see more of him here. Um, I, I love when the, the subject is centered and it just has this nice balance to it. Right now, it feels a little left to right. Or you could even exaggerate it so he comes down even more. Again, that's that's silly, but I just I feel like if you're gonna play with this reflection, why not show me this kind of a crop? Something like this, so he can be centered. You can see more, and it's kind of creates this really cool shape. Um, but this is a very stylized image, and very stylized images are hard to critique because you're going out on a limb. You're trying something creative, and I think whatever you tried worked out perfectly here. This looks fantastic. I love this kick here. I love what it does to his chest. I just wish I could see more here and this would be just a little better compositionally. But fantastic work. Thank you for submitting. Farid Ate. There's three here. Let's take these two. So this looks very, I don't know if this was film or what, but it does look quite low res. Uh, it's very abstract, but I do like, I just like it. I don't know what the hell this is. It looks like a piece of metal, but just take away all, all of that, and I like it. I like it a lot. Uh, on first glance, um, my gut says of, to fixing a few small things. Whatever this is down here, the bra doesn't quite make sense. This strap would be if this strap wasn't here or was behind the arm, or just these were gone. Your crop is it a four x five crop? I don't think it is. This is so small, so it didn't work. So all I gotta do for my crop tool is just push G with the paint bucket tool, fill it in, click the mask, Apple T, and then I can zoom in. This is just a really small image. Um, but not taking away anything from the mask. I already like this because it's cleaner. Um, it's not centered. But I don't mind it so much. I would love it if it could just, if it could just come right down this line, you know? So make this go a little bit more to the side. I mean, you can try and cheat it a little bit. Again, I don't want to mess with the, the character of this, but just to make this a little bit more symmetrical. All I did there was, Shift Apple T for free free transform, and then I put this little thing up here to switch between tree, free transform and the warp modes. When you do that, you can, uh, oops. When you click the warp mode, you can really just mess around with it. Um, but I like this a lot. This is much better. I mean, I don't really like this bra strap, but it's gonna be too much of a hassle to fix, so I'm gonna leave it. But what you can do is fix up this hair here. And by that, we're going to use our clone stamp tool just because I want to mimic um, near the bra strap. I'm going to use the healing brush here just because it can turn into like this muddy color. And then I'm just going to use back to the clone stamp and I'm going to go to like 9% and just 
paste this in. And then you kind of see that I'm messing it up a little bit, which is totally fine because I'm going to go back and paint that. And I'm going to add some shadow to it. So, I mean, you can use a mask if you are worried that you're not going to do this right, but I'm just using the erase tool for speed and efficacy. I mean, that looks already much better, but the uh, shading and stuff is weird. So I'm going to go shift apple in soft light, fill with natural color. Oh, make sure I'm on my dodge and just paint this in just so it looks a little bit more like it belongs. And you can see that it's, uh, I could probably do this as a once over, but again, this came I don't know if it was film or if it's just a low-res image but um, this came kind of with this raw feeling so if you want to stick to that then you can always just ignore what I'm saying fixing these line marks again this is just personal preference just getting rid of things that don't need to be there marks on the hand you want everything to kind of just come right here you could also do the same thing uh, like we just did with the hair down here. If I shift apple in, new layer. Uh, I forgot this was at 9%. Make sure this goes to 100. And it's just getting rid of these flyaways. Then use your erase tool. Do something like that. I mean, it makes it much better. I would have removed this bra strap or just tucked it behind the arm, spaced out the hands a little bit, but best lesson's a mistake. What do we got next? All right, this is really cool. Very cool. What's cool about this is you could do two crops. You could crop it as a four by five, which looks really cool. I like that cropping a lot. Or you can do what you've done and, and leave it. And I don't mind this at all. Um, if we just look in, into the subject, there's a few things you can clean here with your, with your J tool, your healing brush just small little inconsistencies especially uh, little flyaways here you really got to pay attention to all of this stuff all these tiny little things uh, make a big difference it's what really takes your photo to the next level another thing here is um, getting rid of these highlights in the eyes what's cool if you really want to make it wild is try this you go to your gradient tool push x so you're selecting uh sorry options so you select the color then x and do the same thing here and then uh with your paint bucket tool go to gradient and then draw from here to here and now you can do your mask delete you can paint it in. It's going to be a very similar color to what is already in there, but it also just gives you a little bit more feeling of stylized, you know? Um, if you always want to bring it back a little bit, you can do the same thing just to make it a little bit more real, but it does clean that up quite significantly. And then you can just duplicate this and uh, get rid of that and then just do the same thing over here. So there you go, very simple. And again, if you wanna still get r rid of what is underneath, you can just use your S tool and really just fix that like that because nothing more distracting than reflections in glasses. Again, you can use your mask tool, but I'm just using the erase for quickness. And now when you put them on, it looks much slicker. Um, you can always play around with the opacity as well. How realistic do you want it? How subtle do you want it? I like somewhere in around 40%. Yeah, helps a lot. Helps clean up a lot. Um, these little specks you can get rid of, but I mean, those are all artistic choices. I would get rid of small things like this. These tiny, small little bumps in here. Just basic cleanup. And then, I don't know how stylized you want this background to be, but one thing I like to do with textures like this is really hit it hard. Very hard. 
And then what I do, because it's so odd and contrasty, is I drop the opacity to like 13%, make a big brush, and let's go like 40%. 25% make a big brush and speckle it in here and it just gives there's so much darkness and richness in here that you kind of want to bring the same thing out on this side um, if you swap it to luminosity you won't get that much uh, insane color shift uh, made it very yellow before but you see that just makes it a little bit more balanced it looked a little heavy here but now Nice and balanced on this side. Thank you very much, Farid. Filippo. Filippo Nana. All right, these are great. Uh, looks like they've been cropped nicely. This is really cool. I mean, these are fantastic. You can, again, you can always come in here and look to see what you can clean up. These flyaways aren't helping you. This image is so perfect, so polished, so curated that we don't we can afford to go that extra little step can't we just small things like this her skin looks fantastic this could be cleaned up um, but I think you need to it is a tad distracting um, you can do a nice easy one like this You can do just a little bit of a soft dodge and burn. Oh, and not a lot here. Just not a lot here. Just enough to darken it slightly. That way you're still leaving the skin texture, but it helps a lot. It just reduces it a little bit. I mean, this skin looks good. You can always go that extra layer to fix some of the blotchiness just so it looks super polished. Maybe more like Raymond Mir uh, style. But I mean, man, it really is stretching. I would think you're just a little too hot on this side of the face. So if I bring down the mid-tones. I mean, this feels a little bit more balanced to me. I could do this on this side of the face, make sure you have a low opacity. Could probably use it here too. Could also do it on the legs. I mean, that helped a lot. Really did help a lot. Especially if you looked at your histogram, you would see that you were blown out a little bit in the whites. Um, this is also a really finicky thing for me, this little shadow in here, because it is so close to the eye and it's so bright that it uh, might distract you from from looking at the the subject. But again, that's up to the that's up to anyone. I like to just do it and reduce it a little bit, just so it's a little softer. Other than that, it's, it's a great image. It looks perfect. Um, the shape and the outline is really nice you could probably darken in here with that same uh, move i used just to make that a little nicer now that i'm seeing it i could probably do it on the, the leg yeah this curves move helped a lot um, just a little bit lost on the detail like just in here you're starting to, to lose it and i feel like that's much nicer it's hard. I mean, your flyaways along the edge are perfect. Her skin looks great. I like her makeup. Um, yeah, great job. And then what can we do here? This is very interesting. Uh, first thing I would say is amazing typewriter, amazing subject. It's incredible, everything. The only thing I don't like is this background. Um, I don't know why uh, this is here. This stuff, I don't really like this. I don't mind it in here, but even that, if that was a solid color, that'd be cool. This is all, if this was all the same, I mean, you could definitely go in and, and knock it out to black. I mean, the retouching is great because this looks like a portrait and it's not this polished, finalized image. 
I really do like it. Could use a, a stronger specular highlight in here just to give his eyes that, you know, zing. Very small detail. Almost not necessary. But it just gives him that little pop so it's not like he has these demon eyes. Mm. You can just copy it over. This is actually just a little too strong for me. Since it's already there. Just to give it some balance. Wild. Make sure you're right on the, on the right layer. You can see how often I make that mistake. I mean, I don't know if that made it better. I don't think it did. Alright, scrap it. Yeah. Other than the background, I think this is fantastic. Um, you could, again, just do some slight skin cleanup. Dodge tool, oh, just small, tiny things, just to smooth it out. I mean, we're not trying to make him look perfect by any means. You want it to be authentic to who this person is, but there are small little things you can do to just help him uh, make the viewer not get distracted by a silly skin blotch or something like that. And it's only after you stare at faces for so long and so many images that these kind of things just kind of leap out at you. I mean, you could fix it all the way in here. Whoops, sorry. You could fix it all the way in here. Just going over very lightly, very crude, very quick. Up in here. A little bit on this side of his nose because it's a little hot. Balance it out here. The light's very nice though. Um, I'm a big fan of it. I can see a little bit of skin retouching done in here. You can see that blur. You might want you might want to either just reduce the opacity of this layer or go back, start over, take your time, do it a little bit different. Um, skin's very tough, especially in these very porous, bright spots. You've really got to take your time, especially if you're working on um, a high contrasted image like my work is. Uh, it makes it very difficult to retouch. You can see some more uh, layers in here that work with the J tool. So I would just go back and reduce that opacity just a little bit. See, this helps a lot. Imagine if we spent another 40 minutes on this. Uh, you could really take it to the next step. Um, other than that, though, I think it's great. Such a clean image. I love the idea. I love the concept. The typewriter's cool, but my only things was takes a little bit more time on the skin. It's not to polish it or make it look perfect. Just to fix these small little tiny things, these small little blemishes, because you can't tell me this looks better than this. It's just, it's almost hard to go back. And when you're shooting, just try to simplify this background. I know you could do it. You, I mean, it's a very dark edge background, so you could take a color like this and really knock it out. That's a lot of work. It's almost just, this is good as is, but moving forward. All right, thank you very much, Filippo. All right, last one. Roshane Photography. All right, I saw something cool when I come over here. You can see how it's very, um, very sharp. You've almost done too much. Um, you can see because it's so sharp, these little specks that I talked about before really stand out. And you got to do everything you can in your power to make rid of those because your mom, your sister, your friends might not notice, but a photo editor will. Um, this is a huge thing when it comes to printing. Uh, let me just do a couple more here. You can see these white specks will just be the worst after the fact. Another thing is, it just, it's too, it has too much texture, you know? It's like the sharpening tool has just come on too much. I'll do blur. I don't know if I want to do a, a Gaussian blur. It's just, it's just so, just so sharp um 
another thing is I see you've got the beautiful crop on but you never export with the crop on because now I'm stuck with this but what I will do is do this hmm. yeah don't export with the crop but I love that you're cropping and it looks like you're using my methods but yeah try to never export like that um, unless it's an artistic point of view then if there's an artistic reason behind it, then I'll shut up. Let's see, let's blur this a little bit. I mean, I hate blur. I'll never use blur on skin ever. But this is just too, has too much tactile to it. I'm just trying to drop this down a little bit. And then just cause I'm sneaky, when you add that tiny little blur, uh, I'm just gonna bring the eyes back so it still feels like a sharp image. And then the first thing I notice, I mean, these are in no particular order, I'm just critiquing and going through, but the nose is for sure an issue. And now, now that we have this, we can actually dial it back. I didn't need that much sharpening. But you do have to spend your time um, on some trouble areas like this. Uh, and there's no way to do it other than just putting the time in. Um, when you're trying to do some quick kind of solve that does this blank thing, kind of like what I was trying to do with blur, how I said I never use it, it's because it just it doesn't work. Nothing will beat going in and doing this you know, difficult, thankless work. But when it's hand drawn and it's done by hand and you've put the time in, that's what gives it, you know, this special look. That's what makes it elevate above everybody else's. And the more you do it, the quicker you get at it. And then it doesn't become so bad. I mean, uh, just after this one little point, you can see that this has made a big difference on this nose. And I'm uh, very excited to zoom out. Just a few more clicks. Obviously, I need to do more work on that, but I mean, that is a lot better. And even if you think that's too much, then you, you play with your opacities and you bring that back to 60% because I still like it there, but it reduces the sharpness. I love, I love how sharp this, this image is, but it really is unforgiving. It's unforgiving with the skin. It's unforgiving with flyaways. Um, it really just is unforgiving. So that's why you have to be so good with your other, other skin retouching. A few things up here, a few of these white marks. And then we have some more flyaways. Um, if I had more of this, what I would do is use my clone stamp tool and come in here and make it better but I need a big stamp so I can uh, so I can sample like this and I know that's in the in the raw I know you have a long a big big background um, but it's hard to do without it I mean it can be done it's just a lot of work I mean, that's not too, too bad. Put the mask on and then paint it in. And just work the edges a little bit so it's not so noticeable. Although this one can come right in. It's all about figuring out where the hair goes. And then if you want, uh, you can bring the opacity back just so it's a little bit no, I'd leave it like that. And then you do the same thing on the other side. But again, that already this already helped a lot. Fixing that hair, fixing the sharpness of her skin. I would also fix these lines here, which is easy to do. Just your clone tool. Very simple. Yeah, looks great. It's a great image. The light is very nice. You just got to work on the skin retouching a little bit. 
Um, if you don't like, if you think it's too much work, you gotta just drop back the softening. Uh, less, less clarity, less contrast, less sharpening, and uh, ease your way into it because this is very difficult skin retouching. Um, but if you put the time in and practice, 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 then I guarantee you, you'll be shooting beauty for magazines, skincare products in no time. All right. Thank you very much, guys. I hope you learned that photography is constantly growing and learning something new and that you can critique any photo. And that's the point. You can take any one of my crit photos and critique. I mean, it can never end. No image is perfect as long as you're learning something new and uh, you're willing to, to have constructive criticism. That's the most important. All right. Uh, hit like, subscribe, all that fun stuff, and happy shooting. Cheers, guys.